Hi, everybody. This is Adam Ellenboss, and this is another episode of Planets in Profile. So I'm catching up right now after a summer away from doing this series, and uh, Mars is currently in the sign of Virgo, but today we're actually going to go backward a little bit. We're going to look at Mars and the sign of Leo as we're going all the way around the wheel with both Mars and Venus in this series. So today we're going to give you a sense of how you can interpret Mars when it's in the sign of Leo and um, in your birth chart or somebody else's chart that you're looking at. <clears throat> or how to interpret Mars when it's transiting through Leo, which, of course, is going to happen somewhat regularly. Um, so uh, we, we uh, will hopefully this talk will address both of those things at once. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and share it on the screen, and let's uh, let's make this uh, oops, let's make this full screen. All right, so we're looking at Mars in Leo <clears throat> now. Um, one of the things that I feel um, uh, is very important to start with in all of these series is a, a note on how ancient astrologers actually looked at planets when they were in signs. In modern astrology, we place a lot of emphasis on signs, right? We say, you know, uh, Leo means this, or Aquarius means that, or uh, Virgo means this, or Pisces means that. And actually, in ancient astrology, the signs were really ways of the signs were portions of the zodiac that were designed to help us break up the seasonal developments of the sun and also to describe the different homes of the planets and how they um, how the planets are changed and shifted um, depending on their environment and so every planet except for the sun and the moon have two signs a masculine and a feminine sign and really what the zodiac is is an expression of how the seven traditional planets <clears throat> change their personalities uh, depending on where they're at. And each, again, each planet has two signs where it's really at home. So what we're doing when we read something like Mars and Leo is really we're trying to figure out how does Mars behave? What does Mars want? And how does it get what it wants or how does it struggle potentially with the symbolism of the sun, which is the planetary host of Leo? So the way we say this would be to say that um, Leo is the hot, dry fire temple of the sun. That's really what the sign is. is it's talking about the, the environment or atmosphere in which a planet resides. And so um, what we want to ask the question of is, you know, how does, how does Mars behave again? And then how does Mars get along with the sun? Or how, how might the sun qualify an interpretation of Mars? In order to do this, there's always one thing you need to do, which is to check the status of the sun in the chart. When you're reading Mars and Leo, you can't do it alone. You actually need to know more about the sun. Where the sun is, um, you know, that's how, uh, that's how Mars is going to go. So if Mars is in Leo, then, you know, and the sun is in Virgo. If the sun is in uh, Taurus or something like that, um, this will change the meaning of the sun uh, itself or the, of Mars itself because Mars is reliant upon the sun. So you always have to look at that. You want aspectual connection, a trine, a sextile being ideal between Mars and the sun. That way you have harmonious relationship with the host, which is very key. Okay, so... <clears throat> What does Mars usually want? What does Mars do? Well, Mars is the god of war. Mars wants action, violence. Mars wants to cut. Mars wants to sever. And so as Mars is in the sign of any planet, it's going to still want to do those things. So it's just a question of, well, how does the sun act as a host for this house guest? How does the sun provide for Mars and his needs, wants, desires, etc.? <clears throat> his faults and flaws. How does the sun participate in uh, in those things. So um, Mars, obviously we said, wants to cut, conquer, wants to demonstrate courage, wants to fight or compete or exert, right? So how does it do so in the sign of the sun? Well, um, let's remember something about the seasonal qualities of Leo, right? We know a lot about the sun, like the sun might be represented to leaders or kings or fame or visibility or light, a lot of other things too. It was related to the mind and um, the uh, ancient astrologers also saw that it was related to um, our higher intelligence. So um, <clears throat> we know those things about the sun, but what can we say about the seasonal qualities of Leo in particular? Well, remember that um, Leo is the middle of summer, so it's happening on the yang half of the year, but the light is declining every day in the sign of Leo. 
And so as the light is declining every day in the sign of Leo, there is this duality of the source of light and life, the sun. But then there is this uh, decline every single day. There's decline of life, decline of light, the eventual loss, the eventual death. That's there. That's actually built into Leo. The sun, the suns, the days are getting shorter every day of Leo. And yet it's arguably the brightest, you know, warmest time of year. Well, actually, this is at the heart of what solar, like Leo symbolism is all about. Um, think about a king, for example, right? A king is um, a symbol around which a society is organized. And the king goes through a succession. So the king is actually a position that different people can hold. Uh, and so divine appointment, the succession of kings or queens, that the sense of trying to pass something on that will live on and that will have a kind of eternality, despite the fact that the different people will wear the crown, right? They'll pass it on. That's at the heart of what Leo season is all about. Leo season is, uh, that's why we have the association during this time with, with Leo, with uh, kings, rulers, uh, fame, because anything that has the sense of needing to be celebrated as eternal, uh, something around which, you know, everything else can be organized, right? Like, uh, we can all look up at the, uh, at, at the stars, right? That's why, like, the, our movie stars or our rock stars, um, these are people that we all collectively look up at, and they, they become an icon of something that organizes and um, uh, shapes our vision and our focus. Um, and so many of us end up, you know, we, we're told anyone can be famous too. It could be you, you know. So the Leo archetype has a lot to do with the uh, mantle of power uh, and position in the world uh, as a symbol of something undying, right? So um, that that part of Leo is a seasonal part of Leo that we need to understand in order to understand how Mars is going to behave um, when he's hanging out in that sign. So let's talk about some um, things. That, well, first of all, because Mars likes to struggle, Mars in any sign can represent conflicts. Conflicts with what? Conflicts with solar things or conflicts in relation to this seasonal solar archetype that we just talked about. The, the, the need to live on and endure despite the dying of the light. That's fame and uh, icons and, and legacies and you know, greatness and awards and medals. We memorialize things. That's all, that's the Leo, right? So that's always going to be a part of the qualification of Mars when it's in the sign. And Mars can struggle with those solar issues, or um, Mars can also find conflict with those issues or honor with those issues. Those are the typical things that Mars is going to bring in any sign, and then you just mix it with the planet, in this case, the sun again. So celebrities with Mars and Leo, Donald Trump, got it right on the ascendant, right? Think about it. He's like, what? you know, the critics, those who, who don't like him, I'm not going to get political here, so I'm going to try to be objective. Those who do not like him, um, they say, uh, you know, he's a bully. He's a strong man, right? He's a braggart, right? Mars and Leo, right on the ascendant. Other people say, I like he's strong. I like that, right? But it's the Mars archetype. And it has to do with the mantle of power and authority. Mars and Leo, the executive, you know, you're fired, right? He's the king. He's got the, the regal thing, but he's also got that kind of executive feature. That's Mars and Leo. How about Beyonce? You think about how Mars and Leo she is. She's She's strong and powerful. It's like, it's like a war queen kind of feeling with Beyonce. You get that. Hillary Clinton also has Venus and Leo. And, you know, one of her, what do her critics say? She's a hawk. She's, she pretends like she's, you know, all about peaceful things, but she's, she's more ambitious and wants to wield power more than, than uh, she lets on. That's one of the great criticisms that you hear about her, uh, even from liberals, right? So... <clears throat> Venus in, in uh, or uh, Mars in Leo. Now, how about James Dean? Childhood, you know, rebel, right? You have that symbol of th th that which is young and youthful and solar, right? Apollonian and uh, something classic and uh, eternal about James Dean, the kind of eternal youth, but the troubled youth, right? Rebel without a cause. <clears throat> how about Michael Jordan, right? The king of basketball, right? He is the 
undisputed greatest of all time. And he has this, this, he has, he has a relationship to fame, but he's incredibly competitive, Mars and Leo. So it's not like Venus and Leo, where it likes to bask in the light and the greatness. You know, this is a warrior king kind of principle. Harrison Ford, right? He's the, you know, think of Indiana Jones, uh, Star Wars. He's the, he's the hero who's famous, a bit of a, a tyrant, a bit of a cocksure. You know, he's, he's like the guy who's like strong, dashing, famous and he kind of knows it. It's kind of this cocky Mars and Leo vibe. <clears throat> Frank Sinatra, similar vibe, right? Famous, but kind of cocksure and s- stronger, right? That that's, it's not like, again, Venus and Leo, where you, you have more of the like, like, you know, Michael Jackson or Madonna. It's, it's different. Cher, same thing, real strong. Quentin Tarantino, same thing. He's got the celebrity vibe with a dark, powerful, kind of bad boy king kind of vibe, like almost like Elvis Presley as well. You could think about that. Elvis Presley with Jupiter in Scorpio, Mars's sign. So kind of similar, the king, emperor, <clears throat> sometimes the dark lord. Uh, Bruce Springsteen, right? Same thing. You've got the, you've got the rocker, the jersey, uh, boardwalk, knife fighting, gum chewing, muscle car driving, you know, like pissed off, angsty teenager right? Bruce Springsteen, Mars and Leo, same thing. Steven Tyler, same vibe, Aerosmith. Uh, John McCain, a war hero, a decorated, uh, you know, war hero and, uh, and politician and ran for president and had that, the warrior king. And Frank, someone who persists and become fam- becomes famous through wartime. Uh, again, and that, that kind of the courage that Anne Frank had. How about Thomas Jefferson, right? very important for our country's liberation and freedom. He had conflicts with Kings, conflicts with Kings. Uh, John Stewart of the daily show. He is someone who is constantly challenging authority. So he has, he also has this kind of, and he's always like, look, I'm the, I'm, I'm famous, but I'm kind of a, and I'm kind of like a, he kind of has that kind of angsty, angry, um, uh, but, but kind of lovable personality, the warrior King. No, um, same thing, Hulk Hogan, right? Think about that. Bad boy, big king, Maine, right? Hulk Hogan. Jim Jones, a cult leader, right? Um, uh, the, the, the dark Mars, the dark Lord again. Dennis Rodman, again, kind of the dark Lord vibe. Bad boy, you know, he was a piston and then he was a bull. Crazy hair, you know, very kingly, very like super and even queenly, right? He, 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 you know, he can go either way. Queen, substitute queen, dark, dark queen. That would fit too. Dennis Rodman uh, goes in there as well. So you get, get a feeling for it. That's Mars struggling with, benefiting from, uh, maybe being honored by the combination with the, the sun, the solar issues. So uh, again, that's what I've got for you. I hope that this was an interesting uh, Planets and Profile episode. Um, I uh, will look forward. I'm, I'm catching up now, so I'm going to do Virgo next. Okay, take care.